Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back once again because we are here once again. I'm going to be continuing on where we left off with the creation from this week, and uh, we're going to be making the feathers on the creation here. If you missed any of the parts from last week, then you can definitely go and check out all of the streams from previous as they always stay up. But if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can definitely check out the uploads coming in the next couple of weeks as I've got to edit all that and put the music music in. And I'll, I'll do what I'm doing as I record on the PS4. But if you don't know who I am or where you are, you are right now, my name is Blute084, B-L-U-T-084 Art and Games. I'm here once again to continue on where we left off. But uh, if you uh, I've already said that, so there's no point saying that again. But yeah, if you missed how we made feathers last time, whoops, I can pick this one up. Feathers last time, and uh, made this fella here. This one here is called Blute or Blute Angel. And I made some, made the wings and made the feathers, made the feather feathers separately, as that's what I'm going to be doing today. All I'm going to be doing is doing the feathers, as uh, that is going to be the finishing touches to this creation that uh, I made here. This one here is a morning skate. He has a detachable skateboard. I had a load of um, uh, what are they called um, tech decks in my house. I've got absolutely loads of them floating around everywhere in my house. And wherever I go, I seem to step on them or things like that. And I asked my son, uh, who this is uh, based upon, a morning skate. Has he's got his own? Ch and uh, he is my official wingman, as you like to, as I like to call it. This is the wingman. And uh, yeah, we're going to be putting some feathers onto him and finish him off today. Next week, we'll come back and we'll paint it like I did for this one here. Uh, if you miss again, if you miss any of that, that has been recorded. That uh, will be has been edited. No, the painting part hasn't been edited, and that will be again available in the next couple of weeks uh, coming to. I'm planning on taking not a break, but uh, just a break from doing live things. Maybe, maybe I'll do a few here and there, but definitely, if you don't know, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ding the bell for notifications on when things get uploaded and when I am live. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be getting on where we left off uh, from yesterday. We're going to be listening to, once again, uh, the Super Sons. If you don't know who that is, that is uh, the son of Superman and uh, son of Batman. And that's where we're going to be listening to in the background while I uh, faff around and get things done. I'll show you each part and I'll tell you each part of it as as we go along. But uh, yeah, we've uh, this here, this um, skateboard is his stand. I did put a tail on there thinking the tail would uh, use it as a balancing thing. I don't technically need it because if I was to remove that there, he would fall over. So this is was such a such a good idea by my uh, son because he said he wanted something made with a skateboard and holding the skateboard in this kind of pose. So that's what I've done for him. We've got that done. Got that ready. All we need now is the finishing touches, which combines of feathers and painting. But again, we'll be doing painting next week. And then the week after that, I've got a special little project that I'm working on, or will be working on. And uh, But I'll let, uh, let you find out about that in the later weeks. I will be live doing parts of that. And uh, yeah, well, uh, as the summer, so well, I suppose it doesn't really matter now on summer holidays, but uh, as the summer holidays come in, the more that uh, I'll uh, be doing or getting on with and stuff like that. But uh, I've got some polymer clay, take my rings off, because I can't use my rings when I'm, I can't have my rings on when I've got polymer clay playing with. Take them over there. If you want to leave a comment, you can do, because uh, we are live right now. Uh, but if you're watching back, you can still leave a comment down below in the comment section. Right, okay. So we need to flatten this out, pull in the play, but first we need to soften it. If you don't know what Paul McClay I'm using, it is Fimo. I'll quickly show you what I'm using here. And this stuff here is called Fimo. If you've never used Fimo before, then I definitely would recommend it if you're wanting to play with some uh, polymer clay. It is the best stuff that I've found. It's, uh, I get Fimo soft because it saves time having to condition the clay because that is one of the biggest pains to have when you're, um, when you're actually doing your creation because it takes just as long to condition the clay. But with, with Fimo and Fimo soft, you don't need to do anything. All you need to do is you get a sausage, rub it together, get it nice and soft, 
And you do that over and over and over until you feel satisfied it's soft enough for you to start molding and playing with. I'm going to be making it nice and flat and stuff like that to uh, make the feathers. Uh, the same, let's grab this one again. Uh, same way we made feathers for this one here. We're going to be doing the same process. So uh, keep tuned, keep watching, and I'll be listening to that in the background while I do this. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it. If you missed any of the Super Suns, you can check them out on Comic Storian uh, on YouTube. That's Comic Storian on YouTube. Either gives you a, uh, well, you'll find out what he gives you as soon as I press play. Whispers it in his ear. Together. Together! So who is this villain that made these individuals from mud? Why, he's the most magnificent magician of them all, Caracalo. He was granted these powers by himself. The other version claimed to be a centuries-old version from another reality. He gave Cracklow the ultimate gift, real magic. With this clay, he can create anything. In Cracklow's mind, there were images of forgotten villains that he could create in this world. And from here, Cracklow would become a legend. Win or lose, the name Cracklow would be on the lips of everyone. So he would never be forgotten again. The Teen Titans break down the doorway into Cracklow's base of operations with the three forgotten villains standing there. Adam Smasher, Tide Commander, and Chun Yong. But as the Teen Titans stood there, with a cautious raven, an angry starfire, a determined beast boy, an engaged aqua lad, a finally accepted superboy, and a very elderly Robin, they throw down the three villains into a foot of water, and Cracklow yells for them to get up and fight some more. But as they do, they tell Cracklow all of this water is weakening their clay bodies. But they aren't defeated yet, as Time Commander freezes the Teen Titans in time and space right there and then. He turns to Cracklow. Master, you need to flee. I can only hold him in place for so long since I've already used my magic on the old Robin guy. Cracklow demands to know where the big league superheroes are. Where is the Justice League? I want to be famous. He runs off asking why the children heroes came back alone. Are they not loved and cared for? And Time Commander tells him, I have no idea, but with them frozen, Chun Yol and Adam Smash will make short work of them. Back with the frozen heroes, Superboy begins to use everything that he has, and he vibrates in that spot. And with that, he breaks free. Go! He shouts, breaking everyone out of the time stop. Starfire asks what happened, and Robin tells her, Superboy happened. As Beast Boy runs off the track, Cracklow, everyone else gets ready to fight, and Robin tells Superboy to stay back. But this time, he's not going to be ignored, and he shouts, Like hell I will! Then sheepishly, he stops. I mean, like heck, my bad. Robin and Raven chase after Time Commander to get Robin turned back to normal, while Starfire, Aqualad, and Superboy fight it out with the Atom Smasher and Chun Yong. While at first she grabs both Starfire and Aqualad, Superboy jumps onto her shoulders and begins to beat on her head. Chun Yong grabs Superboy, so he blasts Atom Smasher with his. Pause there a second. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be flattening this out, nice and flat. Get it uh, to a nice thin amount, uh, probably like a crepe or a pancake or something like that, an, an English pancake, not the American, quite thin, and uh, just ready to start carving, because we'll, we'll uh, need to carve them into shapes, and uh, we'll be using a, a knife and things like that, and to flatten it out, what I normally use is just this here, this is my, um, oh, my son's rollable toy for his Play-Doh, but it works really, really well for the polymer clay as well. What we're going to do is just flatten it out to a nice flattened, uh, a nice flat here. And while I do that, you can listen to some more of this. Heat vision melting the clay girl and forcing her to drop Starfire and Aqualad. Aqualad looks at Starfire. His name is Superboy, right? Yes. We've got to get one of those. Yes, we do. Meanwhile, Time Commander is running as fast as he can until Raven appears in front of him. And as Time Commander falls, Robin looks at him. That's Raven. She's a good cop. Me? I'm not. So let's talk about reversing this aging while you're conscious. Meanwhile, back with Superboy, he clobbers Chun Yol while Starfire hits him with Star Bolts, and Superboy decides that he needs Star Bolts. He then fist bumps Starfire, and with a final blast, Chun Yol is melted. As Robin walks back into the room, young again, he tells them, Time Commander melted in my hands as well. Hello, and Superboy smiles. Street. Hey, you're you again! And Robin coldly tells him, and you're you. Life's full of disappointments, jerk! The magic man is the key here, right? Did Beast Boy find him? And in walks Beast Boy as a lion with Cracklow in his mouth. Cracklow begins to rant and rave. I had a greater destiny in front of me! You ignorant children ruined it! And Robin and the team stand there. We're not children! We're the Teen Titans! Later, the team begins to suit up in the jet with no real answers. Cracklow said that this was from the multiverse, a version of him from the future. But of course, that's crazy, right? Starfire, Aqualad, Raven, and Beast Boy all tell Superboy that he did a good job. He's welcome back anytime. Raven, in fact, tells him, 
Don't let Robin's defensiveness mask his real feelings, Superboy. He respects you deeply. We all do now that we know you. You're welcome back to the Titans anytime. With tears of joy in his eyes, he smiles. The Teen Titans want him to help out. But Robin, of course, has to ruin it. Don't get cocky. Her father's a satanic demigod, just so you know. Superboy turns to him. All I know is that I get to join your glee club anytime. They love me! The boys walk into the room where they collect the mud samples, and Robin tells them, I'll follow up. Since you're in training, Superboy. Superboy snaps at him. No one asked you to train me! And Robin tells him, It was implied! You inferred it wrongly! Implied! Yeah, by who? And while they argue about all of this, a doorway begins to open up behind them. One that is about to tear their world apart and show them things that they never Gosh. even thought possible. A doorway. To the multiverse! Before Damien could even finish yelling at Jonathan about training and Jonathan becoming a Teen Titan, the two are pulled from their world by a giant set of tentacles. John Short. And there we are. We've got a nice and flat, like I said, we needed to do. Well, now, what we're going to do is we're going to carve them. Uh, what I best way I found is sort of. Take a look at what you're creating and roughly how big the wing's going to be, or the feather. These are going to be fairly small to large to small, I'd say. So we'll go, we'll cut, mm, we'll cut something like a strip off. Now, if I was making the wings, I would um, shape them at the same time. But because we did it all separately this week, I am going to section out pieces. Longer each time because the longer pieces with the longer wings closer to the edge of the wing, and the smaller ones will go in closer to the back. Nothing is the wrong shape because you can always use scrap because you can just shape it, even though it's uh, fairly flat. Just grab a piece here. <clears throat> I can't zoom in, but uh, kind of show you what I mean. You pinch the edge there, grab something that's fairly sharp, but not as sharp as a knife, because you only want to score now. You don't want to cut all the way through, and you pinch the edge. You make a top of it there. Though. That will be the piece that will connect to the actual wing, and this is the feather piece. So I'll run down the middle to give it a score mark, and then... Go up the side, go up the other side, and repete a million, million, million times. Hopefully I won't need to make as many wings as last time, because I made a lot of wing feathers last time. But the more I need to make, the more I will make. I'm thinking that's a good size. I'm going to see what that looks like on a second before I go any further. Stick him in like so. It's a bit too big for there. So what I might do is grab that one off again. I kind of stuck it down now. I don't have to be gentle with it. But it's the first wing, so it doesn't matter. It's just a faffer. And you kind of like decide where you want to put it. It's really fiddly, but that's why I did the wings first. So you... There we go. You uh, top piece where I said you connect it with, you push that down, and then gently push the other pieces of the wing on, because it will stick naturally. But you kind of have to give it a little bit of a, a tap on the edges, so it uh, will stay there. But there you go. If you can see that, which you can't because there's too much light. There we go. There's the idea, and that's what we're going to be doing about a thousand times. I'm going to do it on the front, and I'm going to do it on the back. So while I get these wings ready, do you want to listen to some more of that Super Suns? And uh, we will get some of these wings ready and done and sorted. Let's uh, go, go, shall we? I was yelling, this was a bit like a booby trap from the Crackle guy. And Damien says, the Nutty Wizard did say something about a greater, didn't he? Damien then tells Jonathan to heat him up, and Jonathan turns his heat vision to blast away the arms, and a voice calls out, Return to life, dirt! A giant head begins to pull out of the ground, shouting, You have taken what belongs to me to another world. 
It will a giant head can say another world. Two young girls, Hardline and Big Shot, come through destroying the arms and freeing the boys. John and Damien are thrown to the ground, and Jonathan asks, Who the H are they? And Damien tells him, I have no idea, but your parents are like a whole dimension away. You can curse here, John. As the two pick themselves up, they see the girls beginning to get overwhelmed, and they quickly jump back into the fight to give them a hand. John begins to focus his heat vision as Damien ties the tentacles together, and soon an explosion goes off, throwing everyone away. John gets back up, telling him, It looks like it's gone, but where did it go? And before anyone can answer, Damien tells the girls, All right, I need answers. Are there a lot of creatures living on this planet? And the girl, Big Shot, says, No, it's the only one of its kind. But you misunderstood. It's not living on the planet. It is the planet. Big Shot then grabs John's hand, telling him, We have to hurry and leave before it returns. So tell your little brother to follow. Damien shouts, asking, Why does everyone assume that if you're taller, you're older? And Hardline says, We have to go now. A little while later, as Damien and John follow Hardline and Big Shot back to the village, they give the girls a quick explanation as to how they arrived in this universe. Big Shot says, yeah, if Earth is the name of your home planet, then this is definitely somewhere else. Hardline says that they are prisoners here, and that thing back there was Gordas, sort of a living planet that terrorized their galaxy for a millennia. Once the four of them touch down, John asks, what do they mean that they were prisoners? And Damien says, look, fighting an actual planet is not on our to-do list. We're not sticking around, John. Responding to Damien's statement, Big Shot says, You had no intention of coming here. Gardas, the living planet, was our conqueror. Our home world was called Gura, where its cities were vast and filled with wonders. There are a select few who are gifted with talents and abilities to protect the citizens, and as younger kids, we dreamed of becoming like them. But even as the heroes fought and stopped the villains, there was one that they couldn't. Gardas entered the orbit, and before its mass could even begin to wreak havoc on Euro's gravity, it tore through our world, using Euro's resources as its own. Hardline then continues the story by stating that one of their heroes had helped a handful of them escape using his magic to teleport them before the atmosphere was destroyed. The great wizard, Cracklo, brought them here, and right now their focus is to destroy Gardas. Damien just, wait, Cracklo! That's the name of the guy that we just tracked down here before getting dragged here. Sorry to say, he's no wizard. He's just some loser with some weird clay. He created a bunch of villains from that stuff, and then we had to take him down. Jonathan asks, are we really sure we're talking about the same guy? My dad once told me about alternate dimensions. There could be two versions of this guy, Damien. Hardlight tells him, but their crackle had the clay. It was his secret weapon. And Big Shot says, look, this conversation is taking longer than it would seem. We need to hurry and hide. As the four start to head deeper into the broken town, a young boy shouts that he is here. And as they turn back, a faceless sentry reaches out towards the boy. And as Jonathan leaps into help, he's punched away. Damien fires his grappling gun state, and besides the brute strength, he's already seen what this guy can do. The cord wraps around the sentry, and Damien calls up to Jonathan to give him some of that big, bad wolf action. Jonathan jumps back in, taking a deep breath, and using his cold breath, he freezes the sentry in place. Hardline runs in, kicking and shattering the creation, and Damien says, Your planet has a bunch of this stuff, but it's mostly gone except for what Cracklow had. There's a possible theory that we could get inside before the sentries come around again. Everyone heads inside, and as the little boy peeks over the rock, Jonathan turns back and gives him a thumbs up. Meanwhile, down in Gardas' core, he begins to repeat himself, stating, Feed, create, feed, create. More clay figures are being made, and the one that is creating them is the trapped Cracklow. Later that night, Damien returns from some reconnaissance, and he says that there are some differences here, like how he doesn't trust the water supply. But Cracklow, whoever he is, is the key to all of this. Jonathan tells him that he's sorry, but he has a theory, too. We're looking at two different wizards. What if the dumb one that we fought was given the magic blood? Maybe this world's Cracklow assumed that his counterpart was a good guy. Damien says, actually, that's not a bad angle. But why do that? What would be the point? And Jonathan then asks, what about what the girls said? Their planet is filled with it, so maybe Gardas is trying to consume it. Maybe he was trying to starve Gardas. Damien pats Jonathan's shoulder, telling him, that's just going through making some really wings now. I mean, especially for you. But be before they can go on a whole issue. It's going to pause that a second. Making some uh, feathers now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take me a while, and that's why I wanted to do it separately yesterday. But uh, welcome to the stream, bud. Let's quickly scroll down the middle, as always, and scroll up the sides, feathering it, haha, a little bit. Same there. Like that. Right there, I'm going to do that about a thousand times until I'm done. It's one of the longest parts. That's going to be too big, I think. They're getting bigger. I don't want them too big. Uh, but yeah, this is... We're making feathers right now. And that's why there's a playlist in the background so you can listen to it, because I know this bit's the boring part. So, while I'm not talking... 
and doing these instead. Scroll down the middle. Further sides, further the other side. Voila, wing. So we know feather, we're on the wings. We'll see how big these are in a second because I've got a feeling they're quite big. Don't need them as long as the other wings that we did last time because it's smaller wings for our younger character. Even though the, the character is actually cooler. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Put it back on. Ripped out of the wall, and Gardas appears, and an army of clay figures begin to shout, It's time to feed. Gardas shouts to the boys that he is planet. The clay soldiers all begin to attack Damien and Jonathan, and just the two easily finish them off. Gardas captures Big Shot and Hardline. He shouts back to the boys, I am the planet. These creatures are my biomass. They have altered the clay, and it will be restored so its life force can be consumed. Damien yells that those are people that you have. People from a planet that you destroyed. And they are ready to fight to their last breath. Jonathan says, wait, don't listen to him, Yogurt, or whatever your name is. We give up. The tentacles come up grabbing the boys, and Damien yells, give up, like hell. But before Damien can finish, Gardas pulls the four of them down to its core. And as everyone is thrown down, Damien asks, why would we give up? And Jonathan tells him, it's not like we're actually going to defeat a planet. We have to do something to save the girls. Just as the girls begin to work on a plan to fight back, a voice tells them that he's sorry to say this, but there's no way to stop Gardas. Everyone looks over and the girls shout, it's Cracklow! And they begin to run towards him, but Damien says, no, this is the guy from our world. He's the reason that we were pulled here. And Cracklow sighs, stating that he should have never listened to himself. Is any of this even real? Damien grabs Cracklow, slamming him into a wall, asking how about he shows him exactly how real he is. And Cracklow says, no, 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 you're real. The girls tell him that they are not he knows this because he had created them to fight against him. Just claim memories, pretending at life. Big Shot says, pretending. Their Cracklow is a jerk. This world's Cracklow was a lot nicer. Cracklow tells them, no, that's what he, the other me, wanted you to believe. He wanted to give you the most careless, irresponsible gift of all. Hope. It all started when he was attempting to perform his final spell. One that would bring him notoriety in a world of flying heroes. The timing must have been perfect because at that very moment a portal to his counterpart opened. He handed him a cask of clay with a promise that he could create life. And with the few moments he had he explained everything about the world that he was trying to save. He said that his world was destroyed and he had remade some of his people from memory. Even their powers could be mimicked. Though Gardas controlled and fed off the clay, anything created would be granted independent thought. And then the portal closed. Big Shot and Hardline looked at themselves, stating that they feel real. None of this can be right. They were heroes. And Damien thinks for a moment and says, You need to save the metaphysical discussion for later and focus on what's in front of you. A mad planet's on its way to use you to invade our world. I have a plan, and it requires everyone to ignore their emotional state and do exactly. Jonathan stops and telling him, Wait, even if everything Cracklow said is true, that doesn't change a thing. These girls helped us when we needed help. Mom taught me that while I may have a hard time describing what a hero is, I'll know it when I see it. Right now, I see it in them. Cracklow shouts that they're just a bunch of kids. They're powerless against Garnets. And Damien covers Cracklow's mouth, stating, These children just kicked your butt on the other planet. I'm sure we can do it again on this one. Big Shot asks what they're supposed to do if they're made of clay. Gardas could just destroy them in an instant. And Jonathan tells them, You do what every hero does the best that you can. Damien quietly says, Jeez, you sound like your dad. And Jonathan whispers back, I'm going to take that as a compliment. Suddenly the ground cracks, his tentacles shoot up, grabbing everyone, and he pulls Cracklow close, stating, you know how to use the portal. Open it so I can feed. Cracklow begins to say that he needs the children to focus on their home world so he could. But Jonathan begins blasting away, yelling, We're not helping you with anything. Gardas shouts, Silence, man child. And Jonathan asks, Man child? The name's not man child, it's Superboy. However, as the tentacles grab a hold of everyone else, more clay soldiers appear, grabbing Jonathan and pulling him to the ground. Cracklow fixes his glasses, telling Gardas to keep the super one down. He's the only one I with mean, true power. The portal hey, is buddy. open, and Cracklow says that he will lead Gardas back to their world to feed on the... Quickly tell you what I'm doing. Uh, we're making some feathers for this uh, creation that I did yesterday. You obviously remember seeing that me do that. Um, we're just making feathers. I'm going to make a whole load of feathers, so I'm kind of being a bit quiet today. So if you want to leave some comments, you can do, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer those comments. But I've got that playlist in the background at the moment. And I'm just making a whole load of feathers. I make it first. 
see how many I'll meet I need for one side, and then I'll do uh, another for the other side. It's going to take me a uh, fair bit of time because they do take a time to make feathers. Not because they're hard to make, as you can see how quickly I'm making them, but uh, because of the amount I've got to make. And they don't have to be symmetrical. They don't even have to look the same. They just need to look like a feather, like I'm doing here. Scroll down the middle, flick the sides. Like so, to give them a feathered look. I'll give you a zoom in on this. So you can see what I've done. Keep my hand steady. And that's kind of what I've been doing. And I've done all that so far. So that's all the clay that I would I prepared. Uh, we'll see if I can stick some on. What are you saying there, mean project? Uh, when when the days are cold and the card all fold and the saints will hail, all are made of gold. Okay, is that a is that from a song? All right. So what I was saying to you earlier on. Uh, we get, you get that there, you got the little piece which I pinch on every single one to make the beginning of the feather, and that's too long, so, or is it, can I have it like that, I wonder. Get it? No, that's too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that, cut that to shape a little bit shorter. Because I've already done it, it's not gonna hurt too much. What I do is do that, and do that, and we've still got the same effect, it's just made it a little bit shorter. Stick that one down the middle. We've got a kind of a gauge. What I'm going to do, and you can see what I'm doing. You can see what I'm doing. Stick it where I feathered the edges. Ah, uh, a feather, which you can't see. There we go. One feather is on. There's another feather on that side. I am going to do that over and over and over and over and over again, but it's not going to be as bad as last time. It is going to be fairly, uh, fairly lengthy time. I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to cut that one a smidge a little bit because it's a bit too long. While I do that, you guys can listen to... Uh, More of the Super Sons. Stolen clay, allowing him to conquer countless more planets. The world will at last know the name of Cracklow. As the rest of the portal opens up, everything begins to get sucked in and Garnus begins to push his way in. He's about to make his way to the main Earth, to the real DC universe. And as he stops short, he discovers he's not able to fit and he asks Cracklow, What did you just do? Cracklow tells him, best that I can, and he closes the portal, cutting off the head of the planet. Damien and Jonathan run over to help the girls up, and Damien asks, where did the planet head go? Jonathan tells them that Gardas disappeared, but maybe not for long. Will the girls be able to pull themselves back together? Magical clay flies up and crackles shut, but he can fix them. He can make them just as the other remembers them. The clay starts to reform and attach to the girls, and soon the two of them stand back up, not even a scratch off. Cracklow begins pushing the boys towards the portal, stating that they have just a moment. They have to leave now if they're going to make their way back to their world. Jonathan tells him, wait, we still need to fight. And Cracklow says the bioelectric surge that he made will course through the planet's cerebral core for weeks, giving him enough time to make a clay army. Hardline walks up grabbing the boys, dragging them to the portal, stating, you heard him, now hurry. Before they can go, they would like to say thank you, though, for their kind words and actions. The world is lucky to have heroes like them. As the four of them hug, the girls shout, time for them to go, and they shove them through. Damien calls back, we'll find a way back! And if Cracklow doesn't save you, then... But Cracklow stops him, stating, you will help the girls from here. Don't worry. As Damien and Jonathan go back to their normal lives, Big Shot and Hardline begin their new ones as heroes. Hardline finishes the molding, and as she steps back, she reveals the emblem to be a combination of both Damien's bat symbol and Jonathan's crest. There is now an entire other dimension of heroes following the example of the Super Sons. Big Shot says there, it looks like they're open for business. And Hardline tells her good. 
because the new batch is here. And the first thing that she would like to ask them is, who's ready to save the world? In the busy streets of Gotham, a man walks his dog while checking his phone when a hooded man bumps into him. The man goes back to his phone when he notices the leash has been cut, and as he turns around, his dog, Cookie, is nowhere to be seen. Over in the alleyway, Cookie runs and barks looking for her owner when the hooded man returns. The hooded man pets Cookie, telling her, Good girl. God, that was no place for dogs now, is it? Once the hooded man picks up Cookie, he places her in his van and he drives off. Meanwhile, over in New York, Damien and Jonathan catch her out on patrol to stop the crooks when Damien asks Jonathan if he's got this. Jonathan tells him, of course, he's super! As the crook's car drives off the highway and crashes into Jonathan, Damien asks, You sure you got it? Super! Damien then kicks in the windshield to get inside of the car when Jonathan uses his strength to hold up the car from falling into the crowds below. Once the patrol is done, Damien flies Jonathan back to Metropolis, and Jonathan shouts, That was fun! We make a great team! So high five! Fist bump! Jonathan gets out, and Damien tells him, My fists are only used for hitting bad guys, not bumping! As Damien leaves, Jonathan heads into his apartment when Crypto jumps up looking Jonathan. Jonathan runs over to the news board and crosses off the news article about the bank robbers. He then tells Crypto that tomorrow he's going to be getting to work on that missing animals case. But right now it's pretty late and he's kind of going to turn into the night. As Jonathan passes out of his bed, Crypto looks at the news clipping and he flies into the night. He arrives at Wayne Manor Landing by the barn and he begins to bark as he pulls open the doors. Inside is a pair of glowing eyes. And then he hears... Oh. Crypto runs inside, wagging his tail as Batcow murls again. And Crypto begins to rub his head on Batcow. Crypto barks again, and once the Batcow knows the situation, she moves back rather loudly. Oh. The moves carry on into the manor where the Bat Hounds, Ace and Titus, are sleeping, and the noise wakes Titus up. He heads outside of the barn to find Crypto, and Cripple begins to rustle in his cape for something. Second later, he pulls out the news clippings of the missing animals, but before Titus can even bark, Batcow is there with his leash. Once Titus is set up, Crypto pulls on the leash and lifts Titus into the air as they fly off. After a short flight, Crypto brings Titus to the DC Investigations building to meet with their old friend, Detective Chip. Chip leans up from his bed, stating, Ha ha! Look what the cat dragged in! Must be something important for both of you to be here! Sadly, though, I'm pretty banged up for the fight against the Brotherhood of Evil, so I'll have to help you in whatever way I can. Crypto walks up with the news clipping, and as Chimp begins to read it, he says that he was reading about this. He was going to take a look at the case once he healed up, but there isn't much that he can do right now. Chimp thinks back on it for a moment and then says, Wait, you're not thinking about getting the band back together, are you? Getting the Super Pets back together for one more mission? I can remember it was just like the other day. Lexi, the Plastic Bird, Fat Hound, Clay Critter. Crypto, Bat Cow, and Streaky. You were a fine force of fur, but truth be told, it's doubtful that Streaky would even talk to Crypto. Not after what happened. Crypto whimpers and then barks and Chip yells, Okay, okay, Lexi and Streaky meet up every Wednesday for drinks at the park. If they ask, you didn't get it from me. A little while later over at the park, Crypto and Titus begin searching for Streaky when Crypto thinks back to what happened on that frightful night. The one that separated the Super Pets! The Super Pets were all in the same park when Dexstar and his animals attacked. It was Clay Critter who got killed. It was all his fault. Crypto failed the team. Crypto quietly barks as Streaky appears behind him and begins to hiss. Titus runs over to stop her, but before he could even do anything, she bolts at Crypto, knocking him into the swing set. The two growl at each other for a bit, and then Titus breaks them up and explains the situation to her. But while she thinks about it and cleans herself, there's a flapping in the air, and Flexi flies down. He first lands on Crypto, but after Crypto shakes him off, Streaky explains everything to him. Flexi points knowing where to go, but before leaving, Crypto and Streaky go back to growling at each other. Streaky snubs Crypto soon, and Crypto flies into the air, grabbing onto Titus's leash and leaving Streaky behind. Streaky looks up, sad, knowing that she isn't helping for one true love. As the three of them fly over Gotham, Flexi squawks and uses his head to point down at the glowing barn, signaling that they are here. The glowing light is coming from an alien spaceship, and inside of it are all of the missing animals. Crypto uses his heat vision to get inside of the ship, and once all of the dogs see Flexi, they start barking and chasing after him. They go back and forth until Flexi finally changes into a bear and begins to chase after the dogs. But before long, the hooded man from before, who is actually an alien, tells the new group of dogs they are better off without. Him. The humans make them pets. Now it is time for them to be free! Just as the alien pulls up, Crypto jumps out on the van, crushing it. And the alien quickly hits a button inside. 
Suddenly, a small pod shoots out of the van and then is stopped as it crashes into Bat Cow. Titus runs over to open up the cage with the animals. Maybe and Scott's asking, Don't you understand what I'm doing? I'm saving you. I'm setting you free. I am the strange. But before he could finish, Titus jumps in, pinning the alien to the ground. The alien reaches into his coat, stating that they all need to calm down. Take a little nap. However, just then, the alien can see something coming. And Streaky slams the cage that he was using to take the animals, slamming it down on him over and over. Crypto wields the cage shut, and the alien shouts they just ruined everything. They don't deserve to be saved. The next morning, the doorbell to Wayne Manor is rung, and Damien opens the door. Jonathan tells him that he flew over as fast as he could when he got the call, which he didn't have to do. So- okay, I'm going to pause that there a second. Uh, whoa, there's a lot of comments. What were we saying there? Hide the truth, I want to shelter you, but the, the beast inside there where now can hide. Are you writing poetry, bud? Remember, we still are made of greed. This is my kingdom come. This is my kingdom come. Uh, okay. Oh, imagine dragons. Now I get. This is my kingdom come. This is my kingdom come. That one. Da, 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 da. Actually, I better not sing. I'll probably get copyright just for singing it. Uh, or is that your plan? <laughs> I broke that wing a little bit from playing around with it, but that's okay because we can have we can repair it with some more clay. I will make it better. I will make it faster. I will make it stronger. <laughs> oh, this wing does not look healthy. Uh, okay, all right. Um, well, we got the feathers on there like I wanted to. in doing so I broke it right okay this is going to be a little bit fiddly give me a minute I'm going to stick some in there yeah I'm going to have to re-stick that completely re-stick it okay that's no problem it's all hard so I can just stick it where it needs to be and it should stay Hopefully, let's turn it around so I can actually see it from the back here. And stand there. Yeah, it's going to need a little bit of repairing. And what I have, because I, I bent the wing a little bit, snapped. Thank you for, for, for the. Thank you for those likes. That should do. That should do. There's a nice repair job. Right. We have to do, I'll just show you what I've done there with the wings. And that's the feathers that I was talking about. We've put all the feathers in the fairly right shape. They'll need to be baked before I'm happy with them, though. Uh, we've got to do the back of the wing now. So I'll, oops, wrong way. I will stick them on now. Let it stand there. Okay, so I'll have a nice, fairly big wing there. I keep calling it wing. It's a feather. <laughs> stick it on so it matches the other side. I'll stick that one on so it matches that side. That's a bit too long, that one. I'll pinch off the top. Again, pinch the top there. So you've got something to connect with and then just tap the edges so it sticks. One time where it's tacky, I actually like it being tacky because when I say tacky, I mean very sticky. I get to use that stickiness to my advantage instead of it sticking to me like a pain in the bum. Okay, we're going to have to make another set, I think. 
Actually, I'm going to use that as the gauge to how big I want them to be. Let's move him to the side. No, uh, I don't want it. Hey, you saying I can't sing? How dare you? I have a beautiful singing voice. A, so a singing voice of a frog. <laughs> Okay, buddy. Thank you very much. Enjoy your book. Good job for reading, mate. Well done. I haven't read anything apart from comments and web pages for a very, very long time. So process again. We're nearly there. Just a few more bits. Actually, I'm going to get a little bit more. Actually, do I need a little bit more? We'll see. See how flat I can get this in a minute. Again, it doesn't need to be super fat, nice and thin. Less you use, thinner it goes. Make sure each time you do it, you turn it over. I did forgot to say that because it will stick. You dare curl. It will stick like nothing. There's a little bit of excess, but I don't care. Right, so we need feathers that length. We need one. Uh, all right, let's just pinch that a second. Make one out of this a sec and see how big that is. I'm going to make them now uh, to go on each time because I had to cut so many last time. I just want to get it right on the first go. On layer it on each time. You stop losing that. Down here, right. Like so. And I'm not. I'm not going to need. I'm not going to need that. So let's pinch that off the top. Take any excess off. Oh, we're at 42 minutes already. See? <laughs> it's a lengthy period to do all this. I've got to think of something to make in the oven tonight, though. So I can bake this. Uh, I have to turn the oven on for a few minutes. I think that's a bit too long, really, for there. So I'm going to... Oh, it's already ripped there, so just rip it off. Cut it to shape. Or you can stick to me and go over there. Just as helpful, I suppose. Or not. That's a bit too big. So, yeah, that, that was too big. Let's scroll that in quickly. Should do. I'll do this wing first, I think. Just so I've got an idea before I have to really faff with the other one because it is really delicate now because I broke it, snapped it at its uh, joint. Okay, right. Uh, probably that size. Take that off.
Na 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 Dun 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 Pick it up Put it on Like that Stick it down Stick it to the other one Smooth it out One small one for there And that should be ready Excess over there. Pinch the top. Pinch the top. Score the middle. Flick the sides. One feather. Take a bit of that off. And stick him there. Like that. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, about that size. And press this again, score down the middle, flick the sides, flick the other side, stick it on. Get on, don't stick to me, my hands are getting a bit sticky now. There we go, a set of wings on one side. I'm going to go and clean my hands a second because they're getting quite clammy. While I do, you can listen to more of this. It's this weird pigeon that you sent was begging me to come over. Flexi flies over Jonathan's head as Damien drags him and stating that the pigeon things aren't from him. But it doesn't matter. What matters is you got to learn to tie your dog. Jonathan asks, what is that supposed to mean? Crypto should be home. Maybe Mon and Dad gave him his freedom. Damien opens the door to the back, stating, I really hope that your day is free, because you got some work to do. Jonathan begins telling him that he can't. He's got to find out where all the animals have been taken to. And as Jonathan looks out, he sees Crypto and Titus sitting in the middle of all of the missing dogs. And Damien says, yeah, mission accomplished, apparently. So now, you got to get them all home. Jonathan says, wait, we're supposed to be a team. But as the two of them argue over who's going to bring the dogs home, Crypto and Titus look at each other, they bump paws. It was a quiet night at Wayne Manor as Bruce Wayne sits in his study reading a book. Not long ago, the Bat family had to fight off a future version of Tim Drake, one who had taken the Batman mantle and claimed the destruction of the world by a select few had come to pass. He had traveled back in time to prevent it from happening, and together the Bat family managed to hold the future Tim back until Hyper Time ultimately pulled him back to his own timeline. However, as Bruce reads his book... He begins to sense something, and he looks out his window to see a large bat-shaped figure coming his way. Before he even has a chance to react, future Tim breaks through the window, telling Bruce, Hello. Tim kicks Bruce back, and he asks, Didn't expect me back so soon, did ya? That hypertime just swallowed me up. Tim then kicks Bruce in the face and picks him up, throwing him into a wall. Bruce groans in pain as he gets up, wiping the blood from his nose, and he says, I'm going to take a guess that there's another mission about the timeline needing to be saved. And the only way for your plan to succeed is for someone to die. You should know that I can't let that happen. Seconds later, Tim is thrown through the wall into the bathroom, where Tim grabs a sink, bashing it over Bruce's head. The two go back and forth, hitting and kicking each other, grabbing onto anything that isn't bolted to the ground, giving them an upper hand. As the fight continues to make its way to the kitchen, Bruce flips Tim over the counter, and Tim rolls off, telling him, I'm not going anywhere until I get what I came for. Bruce tells him that he's going to have to get through him if that's the case. And Tim says, I know, and he throws a knife into Bruce's leg. Tim charges and tackling him to the ground, and the two go back and forth, grabbing onto whatever they can get their hands on, hitting each other over and over again. As Tim falls down the stairs, Bruce takes out a knife, throwing it, cutting the wire to the chandelier. The weight of the chandelier causes it to fall fast down onto Tim. And as Tim pulls his arm back out, he's holding a gun. Bruce looks at the gun and says, Oh no. Another timeline. Alexa, stop. 
Well, before Bruce could finish, there's a little Alexa, slam. Bruce set me three minutes on a timer. Once Tim pulls himself three minutes, Bruce, starting now. All right, I've got and he drags it to the bat cave, telling him, you're going to learn a done. great deal skipping through time. Tim opens up a chest. I'm recording on the PS4, and I know I've got about three minutes left the on Justice there. League members. Tim says, one thing that I learned is that Batman down. paranoia will be his biggest advantage. Next stop. Arctic. A short while later, Clark looks over his fortress of solitude, picking up pieces of the statues that Mr. Oz had recently destroyed. He tells Kellex that thankfully the pieces are large enough that they can be put back together. Kellex tells him that he'll assist him in doing so. As Superman gets to work fusing the statues back together, Kellex gets a reading that they have an intruder. A homo sapien has breached their fortress. As Kellex goes to handle the intruder, Tim begins shooting at him. However, before Tim could do any damage, there's a red blur. And Superman grabs Tim, throwing him into the wall. Superman spits out a bullet that Tim fired, and Tim tells him, ha, those bullets were specifically made to put at least a little pause in your step. And Superman says that guns are a dead giveaway, that you're not my Batman. That and your suit specs are different. Tim gets back up, telling him that there have been some modifications. Physiology dampener and vocal disruptor. But before he could finish, Superman smacks the vocal disruptor off, telling him, you're Tim Drake, but older. Another timeline, Tim tells him, I can tell you where I'm from and when, but then I would have to kill you. All I came here to do is to make sure that you won't prevent me from completing my appointed mission. Superman asks, who appointed you? And Tim fires two missiles, stating, that's none of your business. Superman easily blasts the missiles with his heat vision, and as the smoke clears, he sees Tim operating one of the Kryptonian battle armor suits. Superman asks, how can you control it? And Tim punches Superman, telling him, Superman from my world taught me how to read and speak Kryptonian. Tim then starts to step down onto Superman, and he grabs him, throwing him outside, stating, God, I worship the ground that you walked on. If only he could see you now. Tim begins to climb out of the hole that he threw Superman out of, and Superman's eyes begin to glow red, and he flies over, ripping apart the battle suit, throwing Tim to the ground. Superman begins to walk over, asking, What are you here for now? I read Batman's reports on your last little visit. Tim pushes a button on his glove, telling him, Something much bigger than you. Before Superman realizes it, though, a red cage starts to wrap itself around him and contain him. Superman tries to beat against the glass, but Tim tells him, It's no use. That cage is lined with red kryptonite. Superman yells, this isn't over. Batman will, and Tim stops and telling him, no, he won't, and neither will Superman. I'm sorry to say this, because there's no more time. To save our world, I have to kill Superboy. Later that night in Metropolis. Something else happened, which you will have to find out. Maybe next time. Uh, I'll continue listening to that, but if you want to find out where and uh, who that was, and you want to listen, continue listening that to yourself and many other co comics, again, it's Comic Story to uh, do that. But uh, there we are. There is some wings. We've got that complete and done. I'm just going to show you the PS4 camera, and then I'll give you guys a zoom in like I did yesterday. Just pause that. Alexa, stop. Okay, so that is uh, that's everything done. The whole of the creation. Oy, don't do that. Creation complete. That's from we've gone from just making the core to making the uh, clothing for it, and then we go on and made wings yesterday. And today we finish those wings off by putting some feathers on. Hopefully you have enjoyed me making this one. I will be painting this next week. Uh, it's, uh, fri today is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday, so we'll probably be going over to GTA and playing some more of that over on the Mixer.com channel. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new. Click the links. That will appear if you're watching back. And I will see you next time. Bye for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like if you do. And it's been awesome having you guys in the comments there.